Steam engines are inarguably the best way to make stress units with the vanilla create mod. Which is why in this video I'll be telling you everything you need to know about steam engines for your create mod world. So without further ado, let's get right into it. For a steam engine to work, there are several things you need. The first thing you need is fluid tanks. These will be the main body of your steam engine. And the bigger your fluid tank, the more stress you'll be able to make. Now the second thing you'll need is water. And the water you'll actually pump into the fluid tank using a mechanical pump. Next, you'll need some source of heat. And when you combine the fluid tank, the water, and the heat, you'll then need a steam engine block. And when you place a steam engine block on a fluid tank, it'll turn it into this different texture with no more glass on it and this meter on all sides. But the meter won't show up any side where there is a block next to it. So since there's water here, you don't see it on the side. Now to be able to see what's just to the right of the fluid tank, you'll need to have engineer's goggles on. These will allow you to see the levels in size, water, and heat of your fluid tank. So a steam engine can have up to a maximum of 18 levels in size, water, and heat. Now there are 20 different states that boiler status can be in. The first state is idle, which you see on screen here. Now the boiler status will be idle as long as one of either the size, water, or heat levels are zero. Now to output the power from the steam engine, you just place a shaft and it'll snap right onto it. And this is where the power will be outputted once you have a boiler that creates power. Now there are quite a few different ways to get heat to your steam engines. But there are only two ways that can produce a lot of heat to get you tons of power. Lava, campfires, fire, and an unlit blaze burner will all get you one level in heat. The same thing happens with soul fire and campfires. Now those six heat sources that I just mentioned will all only ever get you one level in heat no matter how many of them you put under a boiler. So you can have nine campfires under a boiler and still have only one level in heat. But there are two ways to get more heat. The first is a regular lit blaze burner. Each lit blaze burner that you put under a boiler is going to get you one level of heat. So if you put three lit blaze burners under a boiler, you're going to get three heat levels. Now there is another type of blaze burner called a superheated blaze burner. Each of these will get you two levels in heat. So if you have three superheated blaze burners under a boiler, it'll get you six levels in heat. Now the next thing we'll worry about is the size level. Now each level of size requires you to have four fluid tanks. So here there's no levels in size, but if I extend this boiler up by three blocks, then it has one level in size. Now there are three different base sizes you can have for your boilers. The first one is a one by one, the second is a two by two, and the third is a three by three. And each fluid tank can only be up to 32 blocks tall. Doesn't matter if it's a one by one, three by three, or two by two, which means with a one by one fluid tank, you can get up to eight levels maximum since four fluid tanks equals one level and it can only be 32 blocks tall. Now for the two by two fluid tank, it has one size level already since it's made up of four fluid tanks. Now if you want to extend the fluid tank up, all you have to do is right click with another fluid tank and it'll bring the whole tank up another block. And the same goes for three by three fluid tanks as well. And now since this fluid tank has 18 blocks, it has four size levels. Now to get water in your boiler, you'll want to place a mechanical pump above an infinite water source with a fluid pipe leading into the tank. Now for each level in water, you'll need a mechanical pump spinning at 20 RPM, which is what I have this set to, so we have one water level. Now if we put this up to 40, then the water level will rise to 2, and if we put it to 80, it'll go all the way up to 4. 
And if you have it spinning at 80 and you put a second pump on it, then it'll have eight levels. Which means that if, say, we had this pump spinning at 60 RPM and this one at 20 RPM, we would combine those two to get four levels, since those both add up to 80 RPM, and 80 RPM gets us four levels. Now, if we combine those three different criteria together with one campfire, a 20 RPM mechanical pump, and four size fluid tank, this will give us a boiler status of passive now the passive status means that you can only ever get 2048 stress units out of this steam engine and it doesn't matter if you add more water or more size if it's passive it can never do more than 2048 now one of the good things about this steam engine is it actually doesn't use any brass at all and what's bad about it is that it can only make 2048 stress units but if you want a brassless steam engine, all you have to do is have this one pump with an infinite water source below it, spinning at at least 20 RPM, along with a campfire and make this fluid tank four blocks tall, and then add the steam engine block with its shaft on either the side or the top of the fluid tank. And then you'll have 2048 stress units, and you can even combine multiple of these if you need to make more stress units. And this passive steam engine is most useful in the early game when you haven't gone to the nether to get blaze burners. But if we were to replace this campfire with a lit blaze burner, you'll see that it produces 16,384 stress units. And it also changes the boiler status from passive to level 1. But if the blaze burner runs out of fuel, then it will turn that boiler status back to passive and continue making 2048 stress units. So for each level of steam engine, you get 16,384 stress units. And there are 18 different levels of steam engine, which means you can make a lot of power from just one steam engine. Now another thing you can do with steam engines is on the side here, you can actually hold down right click on this part and you can change the direction at which the shaft spins. So if you want it to spin clockwise, you can do that. Or if you wanted it to spin the opposite direction, you can just change it. And this also works on steam engines that aren't even spinning or don't have shafts connected. Now there's actually another way to add water to steam engines other than using mechanical pumps. And you can actually manually right click a fluid tank with a water bucket in your hand to get 18 levels of water for about five seconds. And you can only add this water bucket manually. It won't work with a deployer or a mechanical arm. So this is pretty useless function. Now there are three different ways you can add fuel to a blaze burner. The first way is to do it manually. So if you just right click the blaze burner with a fuel, then it will just put that fuel in the blaze burner. The second way is to use a deployer. So if you put an item into the hand of the deployer, it will deploy it into this blaze burner. As long as there's one block in between the deployer and the blaze burner. If you were to put the deployer right up against the blaze burner like this, it wouldn't input the item in. And the third way is to have a mechanical arm pick up the item from something like a depot or a conveyor belt and put it into the blaze burner. Now a blaze burner can pretty much use the exact same items as fuel as a furnace can use for fuel. And it will give the blaze burner fuel for just as long as it does the furnace. But there is one exception, which is the egg. The egg can't be used as fuel in a furnace, but it can be used as a fuel only when thrown at a blaze burner. And if we try to use the mechanical arm to feed the egg into the blaze burner, it doesn't work. It only works whenever the egg is thrown, which means that the deployer can also throw the egg and power the blaze burner. Now, I don't know why eggs can power the blaze burner, and they don't even power the blaze burner very long. It only lasts about three seconds as fuel. And also, whenever you throw the egg at the blaze burner, you can hear it make the sound that a player makes when it's eating. 
Now, if you know that there's a reason that eggs can be used as fuel in Blaze Burner, let me know in the comments down below, because I really would like to know why this is a thing. And it's not something to do with projectiles, because when you throw a snowball at it, it doesn't do anything. And nothing happens when you shoot an arrow as well. Now, whenever you're making your steam engine, you will want to use a renewable fuel source. So these five different fuel sources are all renewable, but this one, which is the blaze cake, is different. So a blaze cake is what you use to superheat a blaze burner. So whenever you use a blaze cake on a blaze burner, it will superheat the blaze burner for about 200 seconds. But the one flaw to having the superheated blaze burner make more heat levels is that blaze cakes are non-renewable within the vanilla create mod, which is why in the description below, I'll be putting in two different mods that will allow the automation of blaze cakes. One is called Create Stuff and Additions, and the other is called Create Dreams and Desires. Now, if you want to put multiple pieces of fuel into a blaze burner, it will actually stack the amount of time for each item that you put in. So say you put in something that gives you five seconds of fuel time, and then you put a second one of those, you'll get a total of 10 seconds. Now, whenever a blaze burner reaches a certain threshold of the amount of fuel time it has left, you can see that whenever I put a stick in here, it has its eyes open. But if I start putting more in there, its eyes will close. And whenever its eyes open is when a mechanical arm will know to put more fuel inside the blaze burner. So as you can see, after the time went down, the blaze burner went back to having its eyes open and then it went back to unlit. Now that we know all the ways to make a steam engine work, I'm going to be showing you how to make steam engines of different levels. Now for a level 4 steam engine, you can make a 2x2x4 two by two by block fluid tank with 4 lit blaze burners underneath, and you give a mechanical pump 80 RPM to pump 4 levels worth of water in it. This will get you a level 4 steam engine. Now it's important to note that each steam engine can only output 16,384 stress units, which means that for every level that your boiler is, you'll need one actual steam engine block to output that amount of stress. So since I have four levels here, I have four steam engines all outputting 16,384 stress units each. Now when we look at a stressometer, it says 65,536. But if we disconnect one of these shafts, it'll go down to 49,152 stress units. So you'll always want to make sure you have one steam engine connected for each boiler status level you have. Now, since steam engines can only be up to three by three blocks, the maximum level you can get with regular lit blaze burners is a level nine steam engine, since you can only put nine blaze burners under one of these boilers. So this is a simple way to get a level 9 steam engine. You just have 180 RPM into a mechanical pump going into this boiler with 9 regular lit blaze burners underneath this boiler and it's a 3x3x4 three by three by block fluid tank. And a level 9 steam engine will make 147,456 stress units. Since it's a level 9 boiler, you'll need 9 different steam engine blocks to output the stress units. Now to make this level 8 boiler, you'll need a 2x2x8 two by two by block fluid tank with 4 superheated blaze burners under this fluid tank. And you'll also need 160 RPM going into one mechanical pump to pump water into this boiler to get it to level 8 water. And since it's level 8, you'll need 8 different steam engine blocks so you can output all of the stress. Now another thing you can do with steam engines is if you want to have the stress go between more steam engines, you can split it evenly between each steam engine but give each one less stress 
being outputted by just adding more steam engines. So before we were making 16,384 stress units per steam engine, but now each one is making 13,100.2 stress units since I added two more steam engines. And to get the max boiler status, which is level 18, you're going to need a 3x3x8 block fluid tank with 9 superheated blaze burners below it. And you'll need 2 mechanical pumps running at 180 RPM each, which added together make 360 RPM. And if you divide that by 20, you get 18 levels. Now the reason we're using two mechanical pumps here instead of just one is because the max speed you can get with the create mod is 256 and to get the level 18 we need 360 rpm if we wanted to do one mechanical pump which isn't possible. So that's why we divide the water intake between two pumps. Now since we have a level 18 boiler that means we need to have 18 different steam engine blocks with all of them making 16,384 stress units the total output of stress that a max level boiler can output is 294,912 stress units which is a lot of power hopefully this video helped you to learn more about steam engines so you can create more power in your world and don't forget to leave a comment down below so what you'd like to see me build next and while you're down there i would really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button and if you want to help support the channel you can become a channel member and thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one